people say to me, what do you do in the morning? Well, two hours in the morning, that's a lot of time. Well, if I can overcome myself at the beginning of the day, the rest of my day is easy. And right? that's what you do, you spend two hours in the morning. I allow for two hours. Okay. You still I'll, get up at 4 a.m. and that Well, this morning time? I was up at 3 okay. <laughs> because I'm on the wrong time zone. Right. But, but if I'm like, up... You like the 4 a.m. slot. Because my brain waves are just right. I don't have to work as hard. Yeah, my body's a little fatigued, but I'm between worlds. And so I've just, I, I, you know, my body's a little tired, but I get up and do it. And to me, I allow for two hours. Sometimes I can nail it in 45 minutes or an hour, and sure, I'm done. Other times, I'm on the wrong time zone. I have meetings all day long. I got a lot going on, and I'm just not going to fall prey to that common state of thinking. And that looks like meditation, affirmations in your mind, visualization. It's, it's the work that we do. It's okay. the work that we do. And the first part in truly creating a new personal reality is overcoming your present personality. <laughs> you got to get beyond the normal thinking patterns, the normal urges of action and habits to get beyond certain emotions that are residuals from the day before that's the work right there that's the part you have to overcome so some days you just kind of slip in and it's magic because you've been practicing like having a great golf game or a great tennis game or a great run or or, or uh, a great session of knitting you just you're in your groove other days you got to work a little bit more for it and for me what I've learned is those hard days, the days that are the most challenging, are always the most rewarding. Mm -hmm. Because now you're uncompromising to an outcome. And if it takes you an hour to get beyond yourself, to find the present moment, because that's the only place where the unknown exists, the familiar emotions and hardwired patterns of the past, are the known, the predictable future in trying to forecast the feeling of every event in our life, what people do unconsciously is also the known. There's only one place where the unknown exists and that's the present moment. You so, call it the generous present moment. Yeah, and I've just done it enough times and there are plenty of people in our work that have done it enough times to know when you're there and when you're not. Okay. And when you're not, it's very obvious because you, you've been there enough times. So. So you're separating your old story from yourself and you're separating your focus on the future and you're being present. It's just like hitting a tennis ball in a sweet spot. Okay. You lock into something and that wholeness starts to happen and now you're no longer creating from polarity or duality or opposites, you know. Like, you know, people, you know, people, they create when they see they don't have something. Whether, hey, nice suit, I want one of those, right? And the moment I see that you have a nice suit and I start thinking, I want one of those, my brain naturally starts putting me in the equation. Next thing you know, I'm wearing your suit. Well, that's because we're wired to do that. So then we have this natural ability to create. The problem is, is after you imagine that, you open your eyes and you don't have it, people experience more lack. Well, we're not that good yet. <laughs> so then the act of practicing enough times and beginning to create the state in which you're so connected to the energy of your future. Now think about this. You're so connected to the energy of your future, you're no longer looking for it or waiting for it. You feel like it's already happened. The moment you get upset in traffic, the moment you start judging a coworker, you just disconnected from the energy of your future, and now you're back to the energy of your past. Now, <laughs> if you tell me it was that person that did it to you, I'd say to you, oh, you're back to the unconscious program of being a victim again. So then the person then goes, oh, when did I fall from you know, that state? When did I lose it? Oh, it happened at three o'clock today. The next time that happens, what can I do differently? Now the person's moving through their challenges in their life with coherence, with rhythm. They're starting to begin to make strides and that they're no longer knee-jerking to the people in their life that, that they've used emotionally to reaffirm their identity. Now this is the work because you look around to see if anybody's doing it and you don't see anybody else doing it. It's kind of this kind of lonely moment where you're realizing that I'm the only one doing this. That's that kind of moment that you realize that nobody understands you but you, right? And you can't even ask your friends for their opinion because they're gonna give you their opinion based on their own experiences. And it's that kind of moment where you have to draw in all your resources and, and begin to make up your mind. And uh, I've interviewed uh, hundreds and hundreds of people that have healed themselves from all kinds of health conditions. And one of the most 
important elements uh, that I see over and over again is when the person said, I just got to this point in my life where I made up my mind. And they made a decision with such firm intention that the amplitude of that decision carried a level of energy that was greater than the hardwired programs in their brain and the emotional conditioning in their body to the past. And their body responded to their mind in that instant. And the stronger the emotion or the stronger the intensity of that energy, the stronger they felt that energy, they came out of the resting state, the more they paid attention to the choice they were making. Right. So and like the decision might be, I'm not going to let my ex-wife bother me anymore. I'm going to no longer or get had, angry. Yeah, or we had a woman on the stage in our event just recently, 78-year-old woman, very serious car accident, in a wheelchair, couldn't walk, couldn't speak, made up her mind. Like, this is it. I am here to change. It wasn't like 50% in, I hope this works. She was like, I made up my mind. And the decision became a, a moment in time that she never forgot. She will say to you, I know the moment I made up my mind. I know the moment I decided to change. That, think about it. That is the moment she moved her brain and body from the past present reality into a future present reality. What do I mean by that? People wake up in the morning and they they don't feel anything, and all of a sudden, their brain is a record of the past. They start thinking about all their problems, and those problems are memories of certain people and objects and things at certain times and places. So the moment they start remembering their problems, they're thinking in the past. Well, every one of those problems has an emotion associated with it. So they start feeling unhappy, they start feeling discouraged, they start feeling victimized. Now their body's in the past, and if how you think and how you feel creates your state of being, that person's starting their day with their entire state of being in the past. So if they're living in the familiar past and they're in the known, they're going to create the predictable future. So they're going to run through a series of routine behaviors in their day and they're going to want to know the feeling of every experience in their life. Well, if you can predict the feeling of every experience in your life, that's more of the known. So now, the person who's now living in that future known reality how are they going to change? Well, the moment you make a decision and you come out of your resting state and you begin to say, this, I don't care what's going on in my life, environment. I don't care what people think, environment. I don't care how I feel, body. I don't care how long it takes time. I'm gonna do this. And the hair on the back of your neck stands up. That's a new electrochemical signal to the body. This is the body saying he's serious this time. It's like jumping on a horse and wrapping your legs around and giving it a kick. The body's like, ooh, we're going to ride now. It's no longer, oh, geez, I think I'm going to change tomorrow. Right. This, is a, this is a strong signal. And that becomes a long-term memory. That moment defines the person. So then the stronger the emotion, if the, if the emotion of inspiration is greater than the emotion of suffering, from the past experience, the stronger the emotion they feel, the more they pay attention to the picture in their mind. We could say they're remembering their future and they're beginning to brand that circuitry in their brain and send a new emotional signature to their body. And in a sense, they're creating a coherent, clear intention with an elevated, coherent, hard emotion. And now they're broadcasting a whole new signature and that's dropping a big stone in a very placid lake and here come the waves that's moving right out into reality. And the person is beginning to change their energy. And nobody, nobody changes until they change their energy. And when they change their energy, they change their life. And what's the cool part? The cool part is you start seeing the breadcrumbs coming from the universe. You start saying, keep going, Brian. You're, you're, you're starting to see these synchronicities and these coincidences and these opportunities. And people say, I'm not doing anything. Well, of course you're not doing anything like in the same way you've done everything. You're changing your energy and now it could be that simple in the present moment. You start seeing feedback coming into your world. I think that's what people want. And you could be, you could have a master's or a doctorate degree. You could have a high school education. You could be overweight, you could be underweight, you could be sick, you could be healthy, you could be young, you could be old. It, any skin color, I've seen it on all different people, all different races, all different size, all different shapes, all different diets. Nobody is so special to be excluded from that phenomenon.